very impressionable age, I had it in my head that we need to save all the fields and industries. From the 50s till the 90s, that's all you saw on the roads, fields and ambassadors. There was nothing else on the streets. It's a four-seater in which you can fit six to eight people, you know. So perfect for India. The Fiat Milicento, a car that over four decades bore witness to India's transformation, a fixture on the country's roads since 1955, and an automotive icon whose wheels moved an entire nation. DLD 13, fondly nicknamed the Dalda 13, a 1955 Fiat Milicento that once belonged to India's first female photojournalist, the pioneering Homai Vyarawala. And now belongs to Karl Bhot, who's on a mission to preserve India's automotive heritage. very young age, from very impressionable age, I had it in my head that we need to save all the Fiat's and Hindustan's. India had some of the most exotic, expensive cars in, you know, the British Raj time when you had Maharajas with unlimited wealth and custom-built Rolls Royces and things like that. And post-independence, it changed. It changed very fast, where you had no luxury cars, you had um, Ford and General Motors selling some cars for a few years and then they stopped because of licensing issues. And then for the longest time you had Fiat, Hindustan and Standard, three brands selling cars. You know, the small three of India, so to speak. And uh, from the 50s till the 90s, that's all you saw on the roads, Fiat's and Ambassadors. There was nothing else on the streets. It changed so fast. Especially even in the collector car circle, they were looked down upon as Oh, it's just a fiat, you know, it's not something worth collecting, it's not worth something worth saving. It's so common and low-key and um, that ticked me off, honestly. First displayed at the 1953 Geneva Auto Show, the Dante Giacosa design Milicento made it to Indian shores in 1955. The cars would arrive in Bombay, now Mumbai, by ship and were then assembled and marketed by Premier Automobiles. They were popular at once. It suited the Indian condition perfectly. Like I said, it was the right size, it was economical, which is always very important for India. Um, it's a four-seater in which you can fit six to eight people, you know, so perfect for India. And the best testament to their success is that in Bombay, there was a time when 53,000 taxis out of 55,000 were fiat. The car that Carl's driving was one of the early Milicentos to make it to India. And much like the car itself, its first owner was something of an icon. Homai Vyarawala was India's first female photojournalist, responsible for taking some of the most significant photographs of a newly independent India. Her photos were so influential that she was eventually awarded India's second highest civilian honour, the Padma Vibhushan. Homai bought her Milicento on the 11th of November 1955. Mrs. Vyarawala told me herself that, you know, the car came by steamer to Bombay and she paid 200 rupees more to have it delivered by rail to Delhi. Because at that time, a brand new car would be driven down from Bombay to Delhi and obviously wouldn't be driven very carefully. Yeah, the drivers would obviously not treat the car that well. And so she paid 200 rupees extra, which I remember her telling me very um, proudly that I paid 200 rupees more to get it delivered by rail so that the car would not be damaged. From the moment the Milicento arrived in her life, Homai and her car were inseparable. They were so inextricably linked that Dalda 13 also became the name under which she published her work. And she drove the car well into her 90s. Although when she moved to Gujarat, it acquired a new registration number, something its current owner sought to correct. There's a lot of, um, a lot of challenges right now with registration numbers, so the, um, some, it's a state matter. Yeah. Every state has its own rules on re-registering and changing the numbers, uh, the registration number. Um, there are new laws which have just come into place from Maharashtra. We're working on hopefully also having the option to retain it. Work in progress for now. So for me, the registration number is the identity of the car. And if it's been yeah. on the car for 60 years, 
Why should I change it now? At the age of 96, when Homai found the maintenance and upkeep of the Fiat hard to manage, she gave it up for a Tata Nano. And the Dalda 13 ended up with her nephew, who eventually sold it to Carl. The car was really rough when we bought it. So it's not something that I might normally have bought, given the quantum of work that was required. But the story was so special, and when I read up about uh, Mrs. Vyarawala's life, it's so special that I said that this is a piece of history that has to be preserved. Everyone says that these fiats are easier to restore because they were made for about from 1955 to 1996. But it's really difficult because a lot of the parts are unique to these cars. A lot of parts are unique to Indian production cars, so you can't even import them. Right hand drive models, for example, you can't import a lot of parts. I've been collecting things since before I had the car. So it finally all came to use and uh, of course the people who look after the car are the most important because without them we are handicapped. That Homai approved of him as the Dalda 13's new guardian mattered to Carl. Unfortunately I couldn't get the car back to her after it was restored because it took that long and then she passed away. Though I did drive down to Baroda a couple of times uh, to make sure that I just went by her house and took some pictures and things like that. And when I met her in Bombay, she had come to Bombay for an event. And, you know, I told her the car is going to be ready soon. And she almost asked for it back because she said, oh, I miss my car so much. And, you know, I can't drive that damn Nano. And will it be working well soon, you think? And then I say, OK, now it's time to change the topic before she asks for it back. Between 1955 and 2009, the Dalda 13 was Homai's faithful steed, something it's continued to be for Carl. I can imagine of, of her using it as her only car well into her 90s. She had that much faith in it. And um, I seem to be lucky as well. It's very well balanced, it performs well, it's easy in traffic. Suspension is not too bad. And um, it's the right size. Uh, I've never felt sort of that it's cumbersome to drive in traffic or uncomfortable in any way. Just, you know, okay, it's distressing when the car works well. Uh, a nice early morning drive on a good road and batteries are fully charged. Acquiring the Dalda 13 is part of Carl's larger attempt to preserve India's automotive heritage. India's classic car culture is very, very different. We never had uh, people driving cars for fun as a, you know, as a social activity. All of our automotive stories are about moving the nation, real wheels of the nation. So the idea is to save India's automotive heritage. That's the plan. And we, we've been quite successful in that way now. People are looking at Fiat's very differently. So, you know, I've tried to get one of each model every year. The, you know, the new facelift or the new model change. And um, all my friends think they're crazy. I, I am a little crazy, but so be it. The biggest challenge is, of course, storing them because it's not like collecting coins or stamps where you can just shove them in a box. Storage is a big, big, big concern. My long-term wish really is that somebody can appreciate these cars for what they are and have them on display open to the public. Until then, Carl is determined to enjoy driving the Dalda 13 as an homage to its first owner. Even now, people will stop me on the street and say, this was Homai Ben's car, they all called her Homai Ben. And it's amazing after all these years that everyone still remembers it. And on his trips across the country, the sight of the Dalda 13 brings a smile to many faces. The sweetest thing that happened was a few years back, I was driving down the Pedro Road in Bombay. And it was um, Nowruz, New Year's, yeah, Parsi New Year. And you know, you can tell this is a Parsi on car because it was the sticker at the back, the follower sticker. And there was this sweet, gentle old lady in the car next to me who rolled down her window and just waved out and she said, Oh, Rose Mubarak, my darling, God bless you, and gave me a big kiss. And I thought that was so sweet. For more classic car stories, subscribe to DW Rev.